Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly and in this video I'm going to show you that how you can create bar graphs in Surf UI. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a separate control that will be the bar graph view. So let's go ahead and add a new file and I'm going to add a Surf UI view. That's fine and we can just call it bar graph view. Let's go ahead and create that. And if we resume, you're going to see that it's going to be using the same exact template, which does contain the text Hello World. Great. And now we can move on forward of creating our bar graph. Now, instead of hard coding the bar graph by creating some rectangles, we're going to be getting the data from some sort of a model or an array of models. So we don't really have an array of models. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a new file over here. A surf file is fine and I'm going to go ahead and call it report. Just like it's kind of like a, some sort of a financial report, which consists of a couple of different things. So let's go ahead and create a report. That's just a structure that we have right now. And it will be based on the year. Let's see, maybe we are creating a bar graph which is based on the year and the revenue that you made in that particular year. Let me actually get the actual revenue. There we go. And it will be double. Now, instead of getting the revenue from some API, I have already created some hard coded revenue and a function call all, which will return us these three different revenues from 2001, 2002, 2003. It's all hard-coded fake, but obviously you can replace it with the revenue coming from some API. All right, let's go back to our bar graph view. And now we're going to change our bar graph view because it is going to take in reports as an array. And if I go ahead and change it over here, you're going to see that it's going to start complaining in the preview provider, which is a graph uh, preview because we need to pass in something over here. The good thing is that we can actually simply call the all function on the report instance or report class actually, which is going to give us all the reports. So we don't really have to create some dummy data. We are already using the all function, which is returning us the dummy data. Okay, let's go ahead and resume this. Uh, nothing is going to change because we haven't really written any code over here. Now we can go ahead and do something over here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a vertical stack. And inside the vertical stack, I can use a for each loop. But before that, let's actually go ahead and use the horizontal stack also. Horizontal stack, match stack. And now I can go ahead and run for each. And I'm going to say self dot reports ID. And then it will be differentiated based on the year. So I'm going to use a key value coding for the year. And now I will get access to the report. Let's go ahead and see if we can put out something report dot year, which should be a string. And now you can see it's reflecting over here, 2001, 2002, and 2003. But what we really want to create is some sort of obviously a visual graph, not like some text being replaced or displayed. So I'm going to go over here and create another control and I will call it bar view, which is a view. You can create this control in a separate file, but I'm just going to create it right over here. And it should have a body which is going to return some view. And over here we can return something. It doesn't really matter right now. We just wanted to compile. The bar view will be responsible for the individual bars. So the individual bar will be based on the report that you're going to send in. So let's go ahead and see that if we can send in the report. Now I can go over here in the for each on line number 22, which is part of the bar graph view, and I can replace it with bar view passing in the report, which I already have because I'm inside a loop. 
right? It's just going to return us SSS because that's what it's being returned in the bar view. Now we can jump onto the bar view and actually get the actual value that we want to display, all right? So the first thing I'm going to do inside this particular bar view is I'm going to get the value and the Y value from the revenue. So this means that I'm going to get some sort of a limit, meaning 500. This will be the height of the bar graph. All right, so I'm just putting it at 500. You can put it 800 if you want or calculate it differently. And this will be the Y value will be the actual value of the height of the graph. Because if I don't do that, then the height of the graph can go, well, anywhere. But I mean, it can simply go up out of the bounds of the iPhone screen. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and return a V stack. We will start by adding a text. So since I'm inside a V stack, I can return a text view. So let's go ahead and return a text view, which is simply saying that the revenue is 1500 or 3500 or 8500. So we are simply formatting the revenue. The next part is the actual rectangle that you're going to create over here, the actual graph, which will be created using rectangle. And we can go ahead and fill the rectangle with any color. I'm just going to fill out the rectangle with red, but you can uh, use, oops, you can use any color. Let's go ahead and see the canvas. Let's go and resume that. Okay, so it looks kind of weird right now, right? We're going to fix that. Now let's go ahead and check the frame. For the width, we're going to always say 100 for now because the width of our graph is 100 is fine. But the height will be different. So height will be CG float and we're going to pass in the Y value, meaning whatever the Y value we have. So you can see that the graph is working out fine. The problem is that uh, there it's not aligned correctly, all right? It's 1500, whatever this number comes up to be, 3500, and then this, so, but it's not really aligned. So we're just gonna add another control over here, which will be report.ear. And now you can see that our graph we have 2001, 2002, and 2003. Uh, all of those things are actually appearing, but still graph is looking weird, right? So we need to align the center or the bottom of the graphs all together. So I'm gonna go into my bar graph view and in the horizontal stack, I'm going to perform an alignment, which will be the baseline alignment. And there we go. So this is our graph. And now you can see it's that easy to create a graph in Surf UI. Now, obviously you can pass in a different color based on some other revenue, whatever. Like if the revenue is greater than 5,000, then the color will be red or else it will be different. Uh, maybe we can even do that. Let's actually see. So if the report dot revenue, revenue, is greater than 5,000, then maybe we can return, uh, what is it, uh, green? Else we can return maybe red. Let's see that again. Uh, I missed out something. There we go. Oh, not 500, but 5,000. There we go. So you can see that we can actually change it. Obviously, it will be much nicer if the revenue, you will have create some other function which is going to get invoked and Revenue will be based on many different scenarios, not only maybe not this number, but you can see that you can change the revenue or the color of the graph just like that. So there you have it. With easy, simple steps, you can create a bar chart in Surf UI. If you want to learn more about Surf UI and how to create amazing application using the new Surf UI framework, then check out my course, Surf UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. This is the best-selling course, and you can already see that it has more than 2,500 students, more than 13 hours of content. If we will start from the very beginning, where you will learn how to create and combine views. Then we're going to jump into list and navigation and Surf UI, understanding state and binding, very important chapter. And then we're going to jump into MVVM design pattern, you're even going to create a complete coffee ordering application in Surf UI. But wait, there's much more. 
you're going to learn about core data integration with Surf UI and also how Surf UI can be used to create application for iOS, macOS, watchOS. Later on, I'll also show you how you can create the Apple Stocks application using the Surf UI framework. I also have a lot of different sections planned and I keep updating the course. I'm very active on the Udemy community for answering your questions. The best way to get this course is to check out the link in the YouTube description. Please use the link because if you use the link in the YouTube description, you will get the best deal. And to be real honest, I'll get to keep a little bit bigger or higher revenue, which will allow me to update courses, add courses, create these YouTube videos. Thank you so much. And I really hope that you enjoy the course.